Usually when one walks into a gallery or into a museum and notices a fine painting or photograph on the wall, our attention is focused on that object. But nowadays, Eli Wilner has taught us how to focus our attention also on the frame, the frame that holds the painting or the photograph. And the frame has become, to us, an integral part of the whole. And frames are works of art, as we are going to learn today from this wonderful collector, restorer, and maker of wonderful, wonderful frames. Eli's studio here in Queens in Long Island City, right near the 59th Street Bridge, is full of all his techniques and his methods for recreating and restoring frames. Today's field trip is brought to you by SC Johnson Wax. Eli. Hey, Martha. Well, thank you so much for letting us come to your oh, you're studio. You're very welcome. This is a special treat for all of us to learn from Eli Wilner himself. Well, first of all, what makes a frame valuable? Well, I know you've put things out for us to see. Yeah, uh, I think the one item that will show you exactly why I think these are so special. There are two frames here. This is by Frederick Harrer from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Well, see, I would know that was a beautiful frame right. because it is so exquisite. Look at the back. Yeah. Well, Harrer signed the object. Well, that makes it extremely special. Extremely it? special, valuable, and very rare. Yeah. This is what got me excited about frames in the first place when I found these signed frames. And this one is by Charles Prendergast, oh. great artist. And what a beautiful Isn't frame. That and so Prendergast, who's known for his paintings, right. and not known at all for his frames, right. uh, made his own frame. Yes, for his brother Maurice, and for himself. And look at the back here. Not only is it signed, but it's dated. It's oh. actually dated 1909. Isn't that incredible? Oh, and beautifully. Whenever yeah. objects are signed and dated, it means that the craftsman wanted people to know how much he valued the object. And he did all this coloring himself, too. All the gilding yeah. and carving. And you see how the gilding is worn. It looks worn, but it's actually meant. He wanted to show the appearance of age. Well, he did a very Isn't fine job. Well, it's still, it's almost 100 years old as it That's is. Right. What wonderful. a wonderful thing. So how would you know, when you find a beautiful little painting like this, how to find a frame? Well, the first thing I like to do so I like to find out who the artist is and when he painted. This okay. is an American painter named E.C. Levitt, and he painted in 1895. There are different frames that might work. This is a wooden frame, and I think it's fairly successful. It's right. very country. Right, and I think it kind of downplays the beauty of the painting. It does. It Although doesn't... it's the right date. Yeah, OK. And then here's another frame from 1895. And again, I think it's appropriate, but I think the painting is better than the frame. You can create a liner, yeah. so it would be floating inside, yeah. or you can cut but the frame But the gilding down. is nice with it. The gilding is beautiful It picks up it. the yellow of, it the, does. of that beautiful well, Take a look at between this frame, and I look at, look at what happens where this we one? found it in this frame. And this is the frame that actually was found in. And look at the difference. Oh. Isn't that incredible? And that's an extraordinary choice. Isn't that wonderful? You wouldn't even think that these modest apples would require such an extraordinary frame, but how they really how do shine. Really? And also notice how the artist signed his name. I mean, he really signed his name. So this painting was found in this frame. Yes. So someone, someone yes. knew, someone yes. did it right. Do you think he did it himself, Levitt? I'd like to think so. Yeah. All his, all his uh, paintings have wonderful frames. What a wonderful choice. Eli, how valuable is that painting? I think in the marketplace today, this painting would be worth about $10,000 on its own, and the frame on its own is worth about $10,000 as well. 14 years uh, ago when I started, this was worth about $50, or it was being thrown out. Can you imagine throwing out such a work of art? That's, That's original. Extreme. Nothing has been done to this. The gilding is exquisite. Incredible. Now, what about this contemporary painting? Because oh, this is an artist friend of mine named Stephen Hannock. And I think he's just a wonderful painter. It's a view of Florence. And Stephen chooses his own frames. And I'll show you what I think does not work, but is interesting in a so way. So if you were trying to be maybe a livid and put it right, into a 1990s some, frame, yeah. it kind of looks a little funny, I think. Yeah. So that was one idea. This is an East Lake frame from the 1870s. One of my favorite periods. Yes, it's a wonderful frame. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, the color's good with yeah. this. Yeah. But, uh, it's a little busy and a little confusing, I think, with the imagery. Yeah, this, this part, but this is really pretty. Go. That's beautiful. And the black's pretty. Yeah. But Stephen chose this other frame. It's, is this like almost Art Nouveau? Yes. It's a very simple frame. And actually, yeah. if you slide that right in the top, we actually made this frame to fit the, his painting. You see, and he likes, this, he likes the molding from the 19th century but he wanted it very simple. 
perfect, perfect frame. And it's got the right tone of gold. Well, he made a good choice. I think so. And you did. I'm sure you helped him. Well, That's we work together. He's a really, he's a wonderful painter. And when I look on this wall at all these amazing frames, look at this. What period is that from? This is a painting by Dewing, Thomas Wilmer Dewing, and with an original frame by Stanford White. Do you mean he designed it? He designed the frame, and he had frame makers in New York City, which he entrusted with the creation of his frames. Because this is quite an intricate He would draw pattern. the actual frame complete. He would. And then hand it to the craftspeople, mm -hmm. and they would produce it. So this is carved wood. Correct, with then, applied ornamentation okay. on top. And if you go into uh, restaurants like Le Cirque or see any of Stanford White's interiors, you'll see these elements repeat themselves all over the ceilings and the moldings on the wall. And then this is a very simple, almost church-like frame. It's an American frame from the 1870s, unusual in that it's carved. The entire wow. outer motif is carved. What kind of painting would have gone in here? Uh, probably a landscape of the Hudson River School. Maybe not a very sophisticated one, more, more folky. And Eli Wilner not only has the studio in Long Island City, but also a fantastic gallery where his finest examples of frames are housed. And that's on Edith and York. Right. Thank you so much for Thank showing you. us your studio here today, and uh, we look forward to learning more about the replicas and restorations. Great pleasure.